Hey guys, this is Srini and this is the last video on these discussions about hyperparameter tuning that we have been having for the past few uh, tutorials, past few videos and let's end with a bang. Let's actually see how we can use uh, hyperparameter tuning okay, uh, uh, to find the best model and in this case let's uh, use the traditional ones. The, let's use the ones from scikit-learn and uh, let's see for our MNIST dataset for image classification what is the best model? Is it random forest? Is it support vector machine? Or is it logistic regression? And if it is random forest, how many number of trees? If, if it is support vector machine, what is the regularization parameter? And so on. So let's actually span these models and hyperparameters for each of these models. Okay, and then see what works uh, best for this MNIST data set. Again, you can, you can use it for anything, but I'm just using MNIST because we already have part of the code ready. Now, I'm going to use the neural network code that we have written before. Uh, in fact, let's let's go through. I'm not going to give you a heads up. Let's go through line by line and let's not take too much time understanding it. So let's jump into the code. OK, so uh, here is the code. And uh, let's let's look at uh, like, again, like I said, uh, we are looking for what is the best one of these three or anything else you want to throw in. So uh, typical libraries that we normally uh, import and in this case uh, uh, for the previous videos we just used dense layers because we were not using convolutional filters okay we were only using dense so we flattened this entire thing now I'm going to use convolution batch normalization and max pooling for one reason uh, even though this is random forest and support vector machines we need to generate features from these images and I can write our own uh, Gabor filters or something else but let's go ahead and use uh, convolutional layers as feature extractors Okay, and I did a video on this topic, so go ahead and uh, uh, look at that if you don't know what we're talking about. And this is a library from one of the previous tutorials. We don't need it. Let's go ahead and do numpy matplotlib. And this is the important one, grid search CV. So we are going to use grid search CV to search for the best one, best model and best parameters for each model. And uh, we don't need this. This is again left over from the last video, so I'm not going to run that line. So sorry about these two. OK, now uh, what version of TensorFlow and Keras am I using? 2.2 and 2.4.3. Oh, sorry, what? I'm not using TensorFlow.Keras. I'm using Keras. OK, 2.4.3. OK, TensorFlow. Now, uh, Let's go ahead and fix the random seed because we want the results to be reproducible, even though in this case we're not using neural network uh, based uh, model, we're going to use random forest. Let's import our MNIST dataset. We have done this quite a few times in the last few videos, so let's not even plot it. Divide the values by 255. So the instead of 0 to 255, our images are between 0 to 1, or our pixel values, individual values are between 0 to 1. Now, uh, if you look up here, again, we have 60,000 data points, uh, 60,028 by 28. And uh, I, uh, 28, oh yeah, one thing I should mention, in the last few videos, we uh, reshaped this 60,028 by 28 into 60,000 by 784. I think 28 by 28 is 784. So we reshaped into one vector because we were only using dense layers. Okay, if you are watching, if you are coming from watching my previous videos, we're not doing that now because uh, we are going to use convolutional layers, filters that expect 2D, 28 by 28. So we're not flattening it yet. Okay, uh, but we are going to pick only 6,000 out of the 60,000. OK, because if you just do 60,000, that's going to take uh, quite a bit of time. So we're only going to do 6,000. And uh, uh, let's go ahead. And now uh, if you look at the shape of my X grid, this is the values that are going into my into my uh, model. It's uh, in fact, I think I'm only doing 3000 data points uh, just to speed things up. Let's actually do even less than that because support vector machines is painfully slow. Sorry. Uh, so our X grid, we are only using 1,200 data points uh, by 28 by 28. So let's expand the dimensions by one, which means now 1,200 by 28 by 28 by one, because that's what my my, uh, my feature extractor expects. Okay. So now, how do I define my feature extractor? My size. Uh, of the image is 28, right? And then I'm going to use sequential method. Again, I'm defining a function here because the function is what goes into 
uh, into this uh, uh, feature extractor later on. So I'm defining a function called feature extractor, okay? And uh, the first layer is convolutional layer with 32 filters. And uh, the next one is another convolutional layer. Between these, I'm doing batch normalization. And nothing tricky here. And uh, and the end, uh, we are going to flatten it so we get one uh, uh, array. Okay, that's exactly what our random forest expects, our support vector machines expects. Okay, so this is again watch our video uh, on this. Use, uh, you know, using feature extractors. You know, uh, neural networks are pre-trained weights as feature extractors, and uh, uh, hopefully you'll know what I'm talking about if you did that. Okay, so we defined that function. Now let's define our feature extractor as the feature extractor, right? This function right there. It doesn't take any arguments. And now let's go ahead and print it. This is basically nothing but our network. 28 by 28 with 32 filters, and then batch normalization 32, and then 32 filters, and then batch normalization and max pooling, and then flattening it to these many. That's how many that actually comes out. That's pretty much it, okay? Now, let's apply this feature extractor onto our x values, which means Go ahead and model.predict or feature extractor.predict. So let's go ahead and do that. There you go, it's done. And I label this X for random forest or X for RF. So we have 1200 of these uh, images, and for each of those, we have 6272 filters, yeah, uh, uh, values. These are the ones that we need to fit to random forest. So how do we normally do it? I'll first show you how we normally do it and then let's do grid search. So normally we import our random forest classifier and we say, okay, we have 50 trees or 50 estimators. We'll go ahead and do that. And then you fit this to your X values and Y values, right? X for random forest and Y is Y grid. So you fit your random forest to this. Random forest is usually fast, you see, it's done right there. And now once you fit this, you'll just uh, uh, test it. Now, how do you test it? I have, how many do I have in the test? We have 10,000 points, that's fine. We're just, let's go ahead and test it. Let's uh, go ahead and extract features from all the 10,000 of those test images. It's interesting to see what the accuracy is. I'd be surprised if it's high because we are only using 1200 images, but that's fine. And now let's go ahead and predict on these uh, features because we just extracted features. We are going to predict it. Prediction is super fast. And now let's look at uh, accuracy. How do we look at accuracy? From scikit-learn, we use metrics and accuracy score is y-test and the prediction RF, whatever the prediction is. So this is our accuracy and let's print it. Oh, 90.4%, that's pretty good, not bad. Uh, let's go ahead and print out the confusion matrix so you can see what's going, what's working, what's not working. So. Most of the time it's doing a pretty good job and it's confusing uh, five with zeros or zeros with fives right there. So these are all the mismatches, but the matches are pretty good. 90% accuracy is amazing. But is random forest the best one? Or if so, is 50 trees or 50 estimators the best? Or uh, how do we span this? That's exactly why you tuned into this video. I know that, so this is how we define it. Okay, so first of all, let's import the right libraries. We already imported random forest classifier, but let's import it one more time. Let's import support vector machines, and let's also try logistic regression. We imported these three, let's test these three. What goes into the grid search CV, which is what we are using, right? Grid search CV is from scikit-learn. Here, we don't have to convert our models. In the last video, we used Keras model, so we have to kind of use the wrapper to convert that into something scikit-learn understands. Here, we are using the native scikit-learn models, so we don't have to do any conversion, but we need to define a dictionary. So here is how we are defining a dictionary. For support vector, for SVM, we are going to have model, svm.svc, okay? And then the parameters, let's go ahead and look at uh, both RBF and linear kernels. Maybe we should just pick one, but that's fine. Let's just do both. And then for regularization, actually, let's just use one regularization parameter uh, so it doesn't waste a lot of time because we're checking both linear and RBF right here. And for random forest, let's do 10, 20, 30 trees. And for logistic regression, let's just uh, check one parameter, which is the regularization. So when we run all of these, this creates a dictionary if I open what do we call model parameters, you can see that this is a, oh, can I open it? 
yeah, there you go. It's a dictionary. Uh, first one is a dictionary of size two. The second one, dictionary of size two. Third one, SVM size two. And you can see we have model and parameters, model and parameters, model and parameters, right? So you can you can create your own dictionary. That's exactly what goes in here. Okay, for the next part, let's capture all the scores into a list. So I'm starting an empty list, but this is the important part. For each of these models in this model parameters dot items, right? For each of these models, do this. Do define a grid of a grid search. My estimator is that, meaning my model is this model, and my parameter grid is the parameters, and cross validation uh, fivefold, change it to threefold if you want. Number of jobs equals to 16, meaning number of, uh, uh, number of CPUs to use. And uh, again, I showed this in many of my previous videos. I have 32, I'm gonna assign 16 to this so I can leave some for recording this video. And then let's fit this grid Okay, for each model and then append this and all we go, are going to do is at the uh, end we are going to capture everything into a pandas data frame where it shows us what the model is, what the best score is, what the best parameters are for each of these models. So let's run these lines. This will take it uh, uh, some time and I'll pause this video and I'll continue it as soon as this is done. Okay, so this is done and let's uh, let's have a look at, uh, okay, we captured this into a data frame. So we should have added a print statement here. Okay, so print our data frame and let's go ahead and print it to look at the final results. Okay, so here it tells us, okay, uh, for the model SVM, the best score is 86.75 with C equals to one, we only have one there and a kernel of linear and not the other one, uh, RBF. And for random forest, it's 89 with a uh, number of estimators of 30. And for logistic regression, 82% accuracy with C value of one. Again, you get the idea, you can change the number of these parameters, number of estimators, but based on this, I would pick random forest with estimators 30. I bet if you put estimators 50, it gets better, but maybe overfitting if you go beyond that, like if you go to 100 or something, but test it out and see what the best score is going to be. Okay, so now you have uh, learned uh, quite a bit about hyperparameter tuning uh, using this grid search CV. We looked at different models. We looked at uh, uh, neural network like using Keras and different hyperparameters. So now you have the full power of uh, designing your own uh, your own networks and finding the right hyperparameters for your problem that you're trying to solve. So please subscribe to these videos, and in the next video, let's cover something uh, uh, exciting. Thank you very much.